Hi, I'm Pat Murphy Racy. I'm here to talk to you today about this little guy. This is a Westcott L60-B or L60B. And the thing I want to show you first before we even talk about the light itself is the size of it. <laughs> it's crazy small. Let's get into it. First thing about the light I want to show you is just how itty bitty it is. Um, there's only two knobs in the back, which I like because I get confused if there's much more than that. Um, it's really, really simple. You just push and hold to turn it on. And uh, it gives you two indicators on the top. It'll show you the color temperature up top and then the percentage of power on the bottom. And you can um, just wind it up and down however you want to do it. Um, and your, your uh, color temperature is the same. So it's very, very simple to figure out. It's very, very easy. This is 6,500K, and then it goes all the way down to 2,700K. So if you're in a true tungsten environment, this is an easy, easy fix. I typically leave it at 5,500, which is where all the rest of my stuff is. So that works great for me. So I just wanted to show you kind of a closer up picture of this thing. Um, again, power. Color temperature, easy peasy, nice and easy. Right here, as you can see, it's got a good high quality spring loaded, which I really like. Not all of them are spring loaded, which is cool. But you can actually move this thing backwards and forwards and lock it down wherever you want. And this is really good because what that means is that even though this thing is itty bitty tiny small, you can use a lar large modifier in this and still center the, the uh, weight on the top of a stand. This is really good thinking on the part of Westcott. So I really like this. And if you want to make it the smallest it can possibly be, it would be like this. And then look at how cool. I mean, this has been put together by somebody that really understands traveling with gear because you just don't want to bang up these knobs and this gives good protection for those knobs. I also wanted to show you another possibility, which is kind of cool. You could take this whole light and stick it into one of those little little guys for the miniature strobes and you could pop that onto a stand like so and then just throw a speed ring on it and whatever light modifiers you have will work so it's really nice here's your umbrella swivel your umbrella holes right there um, this is a tiny itty bitty small way to work and for location work that's what we need we need tiny itty bitty small lightweight um, this thing weighs this much. The other thing I love about this light is how low you can turn the power down. Sometimes you don't need all that huge power. Sometimes what you really need is just a little bit of something uh, to light up the inside of a microwave on an interior chute. I mean, there's any number of things. Um, but it's really great to have a light you can turn way down. If you love to shoot the 51 2, if that's your lens of choice for portraits, you can use this thing and like literally get it to where it's perfectly balanced for the lens you want to use in the aperture. So there's just a lot of use for this thing, but the tiny nature of it is insane. I mean, you know, in, in old school talk, you could put four of these things in a donkey bag and have room in the sides for all the power cords and stuff easily. I mean, having four of these. So for location work, I think this thing is great. It's so versatile with the ability to do any, um, you know, customized color temperature you want to dial in. I mean, there's just a lot of really, re they just really figure this thing out really well. And I'm very impressed. One of the other things I love about this light is how organic the output is. And it's super wide and it doesn't have that hot spot in the middle. So this is a really fine light. They really put a lot of thought into this. Um, I mean, this is a great look and the very edge of the light is even got an edge to it. So sometimes you want to have a little bit of light hitting something, but not the whole thing. And this is all possible with this, but the, um, the flat nature, the fact that it's so even is really, really impressive. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a great background light, a great foreground light with light bank. So here we've got a little tiny, um, it's kind of like a miniature sport reflector. It's really cool. It's got the exact shape of the Ellen Crumb reflectors I like to use for arena lighting. And it's got a, a four little bayonets. So let's see what happens when we put this on. It's got a nice locking click. And now we've got a nice little spot 
Uh, but even the spot is pretty even. Now let me change the exposure because it's going to be overexposed for you. Let me just dial in the ISO to get that to be kind of a decent looking exposure. Yeah, that's better. What you can see is that the, again, this, it's got a very bright spot in the middle, but it also fades off really well. Um, this is a nice light. This would be cool to like kick through a four by four, um, you know, a shoot through fabric or something like that. Um, this is a very well thought out system. One of the other things I love is I'm, I'm always thinking about packing things and how small things can be, especially now the airlines, it's all so expensive. Check this out. Just flip it around backwards and throw it in a case and go. Now this is where it's really important. So here's dead centers, 403, 403, 403, 403, 403, 403, 402, which means I can go all the way down here. Yeah, I don't get it. So it's a big area that's even. I love that. 401, 289. So this is really 404. Four, okay, so 403, pretty much, yeah, this is neat. What I like, too, is that each one of these is actually an incremental change. On a lot of the Chinese stuff coming out of there, you know, there's not a lot of change for each click. And I'm getting a, an actual change that's noticeable for each click, which is really, really impressive. And once again, you know, you can go all the way to 2700. Uh, 3200 supposedly Kelvin, um, and then 4200, 4800, 5200, 5500, and just wind it up to 6500. So you can go pretty cold um, if you're matching other LEDs or whatever, but the 5500 setting is really, really great. There's 100% power, so let's see what this is. Dead center, that's 404, as we said before. Let's see what the power is at 3200. 402. Now that's cool because a lot of the manufacturers out there, especially the Chinese ones, are making, when you make that change, it's changing a half a stop or a full stop. Actually, more typically a full stop. So you're getting two tenths of a stop difference between full power on daylight versus full power on tungsten. That is excellent. That means that this, this LED uh, fixture is extremely efficient, which is really good to hear. Okay, let's see how this one does. Yeah, 805. So the Amaran 200D is, puts out F8 and five tenths. So it's exactly two stops of light brighter than the Westcott. But but for the size between the two, it's very impressive. Now we're gonna do one more test where we put the reflector that comes with the unit on and we get eight O oh, and seven tenths of a stop. So that's pretty remarkable. That means that if you simply take the Westcott light and use the reflector that comes with it, uh, you're going to be slightly more powerful than an Amaran 200D without a modifier. That is smoking. All right, so let's review. Um, I guess what I would offer you about information about this light is that the reflector is possibly as important as the light itself because it's just going to give you the go juice you need when you really need a lot. The overall design is so well thought out. It really is. All this is beautiful, um, you know, milled aluminum. Uh, it's really tight. When you lock this down in any position, it really locks. It's not going to move. Um, and I'm really impressed that just the fit and finish of the whole thing is excellent. The added flexibility of having you know, whatever color temperature you want to dial it into, that is really fantastic. So it's very small. It's more like a computer, you know, a laptop power supply. It's very lightweight and small. So the combination of all these three things is really, really itty bitty. You know, the one thing that a lot of manufacturers don't want to talk about is their CRI or the color quality. And this is a CRA of 97, which is really good. 15,000 lux at one meter with the included 45 degree ultra reflector. 
I believe every bit of that for sure. It's fully dimmable and flicker free all the way up to a thousand frames per second. Uh, it has nine built-in adjustable lighting effects, including lightning, TV, fire, and headlights. I'm not going to fool with any of that, but it's there. And you can use the Westcott Studio Link mobile app to control multiple lights and update firmware in Bluetooth, which is really cool. So we don't have that yet. Uh, it says late 2022, but the Studio Link mobile phone app will be really cool. Then you'll be able to like literally walk away from these things, be able to change the color temperature and the output. Uh, remotely, which would be great. It is possible to use a DTAP battery option. Uh, just it'll basically be a different pigtail that'll have a DTAP on it and you use batteries you already have to power this thing. These things cost 269 bucks a piece. That is beyond remarkable. I'm really, really impressed. So if you're a, uh, a road warrior, this might be something you need to put on your list. Thank mm -hmm. you.